at this point we want you to take your bibles your notebooks your pens and whatever you have as we invite apostle nanayao eje to minister the word of god to us let's appreciate the lord as the apostle mounts the stage praise the lord we bless god for this solemn occasion we're reading from chapter 5 verse 31 and 32 Ephesians Ephesians chapter 5 31 and 32 for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to the wife and the two shall one amen and the 32 says that it is a mystery so briefly we are looking at the great mystery the great mystery a mystery is a thriller something that is covered a mystery is something hidden maybe an enigma something that it's not on the surface. The Greek mysterion, mystery, appears about 27 times in the New Testament. In the Synoptic Gospels, three. In the Revelation, four times. In the Pauline Epistles, 14 times. And interestingly, in chapter 6, in, the, in the chapter 5, we have six mystery, mystery, mystery. One nine talks about the mystery of God's will. 3.3 three talks about the mystery known by revelation. 3.9 talks about the fellowship of the mystery. 5.31 and 32 our basis the great mystery of marriage. Talking about Christ and his church. 3.4 insight into the mystery of Christ. And 6.19 the Doyen apostle was talking about the mystery of the gospel. The Bible begins with marriage union. Adam and Eve in Genesis. And ends in relation marriage supper of the Lamb. God the Father instituted marriage. Jesus performed his first miracle at a wedding in Cana. Holy Ghost is making the final marriage preparation. Where 197 marriage supper of the Lamb. But to every mystery there is a revelation. When we read the Bible and meet Passover lamb, he's talking about Jesus' crucifixion. Leviticus priesthood is talking about Jesus, our high priest. Mercy seat, as a mystery, it is clear that it's the throne of God. The Sabbath day clearly is the eternal rest in God. Marriage on earth, on her side, marriage in heaven. Worship in Jerusalem, clearly worship in spirit and in truth. Why is marriage a great mystery? Almighty God, Jehovah El Shaddai himself, established for human accomplishment. And for our information, marriage is not between two people, it's three. God, man, and wife. It is a mystery because it's the only institution without me term. No vacation. No rest. No leave. In fact, you can start but never finish. It is only is the only institution where a certificate is issued to you the very at the very start. This one is a mystery. The only institution, God is the principal witness. Man needs the presence before a wife. The only major typology of Christ and his church is marriage. And Bible is the principal textbook in marriage. Prayer is the lesson knows. It is the only oldest institution on earth. In fact, before the institution of church, marriage. Even before the fall of man. But permit me to give credit to Adam who fell. In fact, even after the fall of man, Adam did not seek another wife. Manual contains the manufacturer's intent in creation. So whenever there is some hiccups in marriage, we need to go to God, go to the scripture to see what he is saying. Because when you buy an item, 
in default, report to the source, not court. That's why government can do budgets for many things, including driving license and everything, but not budget for marriage. Because the source is not government, the source is God Almighty. <laughs> marriage is a great mystery because of an expression for this cause. A man shall live. Interestingly, women don't move. As for women, they move from one father to another. So today, from apostle to foster. As for women, no, no, they don't move, they take position. In fact, work was given to man before the woman came. It means go and work, woman, chop it for free. From one abba to another. Man living for this cause. Man is living not a matter of rebellion. But a man living is entering another state of fatherhood and responsibility. More serious still. Anytime a man moves, a new generation, heritage, <laughs> and a nation is about to be birthed. So, Bible is particular with lineage. For example, Saul, the son of Kish. Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. Isaiah, the son of Amos. Jonah, the son of Amittai. Manasseh, the son of Joseph. Jesus, the son of God. After Jesus takes up the bride, anytime Jesus takes the bride, and the name of Jesus' bride is called Ecclesia, the church. How do you master the mystery? It is a great mystery. And for every mystery, there must be revelation. Sometimes, God or wise, he picks one dark-skinned person and adds to a light-skinned person. God sometimes picks an Ashanti, balance the person with a quill. God is a great mathematician. Love. How did Jesus show the typology? Jesus showed love to the church. There's one quotation in the Bible that puts us at ease. Why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Apostle Paul, trying to elaborate love, he gave four ifs. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have no love, I'm like a tinkling cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries without love, I'm amount to nothing. If I have the faith to move mountains, if I give my possession, and this is more serious, if I give my possession to the poor and offer my body to be bent and have no love, it's cost 90. God, give us love again in the church at home. So the old man at 86 will come to church and say, husbands, love your wives. Children, love. Love is important in the equation of the mystery. Faith, hope, and love. Love is the greatest. And in the accolades of love, love suffers long, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast, love does not parry itself, love is not selfish, love does not rejoice iniquity, love feels not. Interestingly, when a man, a man is made to do proposal, and a woman is made to position herself to receive proposal anything you put into a woman you get multiplication give a woman some in our in our language job money she will give you table laden with sumptuous scintillating food <laughs> if you give a woman blood the woman will produce children but hey if you give a woman insult god forbid it's okay i know uh, i mean she will reply a full book with footnotes and reference. That is for some people. Jesus showed a lot of time for the bride. In a church, we think that everybody must be like we are. For information in marriage, you don't change the person to see to you, but you rather conform to the person. And this pseudo spirituality, no, you must speak the way I speak. Handle yourself the way I handle. I think there must be some conformability so that we shall meet at one point. Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus made time, sat at a well, waiting for only one woman, Samaria. Time. So it says, allow time and go. So if you rush a woman, you will get short answers. Hmm. Okay, I know it. It's fine. Don't rush. <laughs> one verse was made to create a woman. Sorry, a man. But the woman, two verses. That's why they love commentary. See. In football, is the coach that is fired, not the players. And check it in the Bible. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. But not God of Sarah, God of Rebekah, God of Leah and Rebekah. So the onus is on the man. We are trusting Jehovah that in this mystery, the grace and the prayer offered on you, you are going to be a great leader. Jesus defended the bride. One day some people came and said that, Jesus, we have something against, we are in a world of things against, things against, things against. And in marriage, you don't, you don't need to keep things against. Jesus, we saw that your disciples were eating without washing their hands. The people are good at criticisms, you see. Uh, depending on where you are looking at it from. But Jesus said, if this is breaking the law of the fathers, you also, you break the commandment of God. So Jesus stood and defended. One of the best gifts you can give a wife, a husband, is to show yourself as ministry of defense. Jesus intercedes for the bride. Prayer. A family that prays together, stays together. And lastly, Jesus helps the church. The same, the same God who helped Adam and Eve in the garden is the same God who helped Foster and Deborah. The same God who helped Abraham and Sarah, heir of children, is the same God who will help you. I feel in my spirit that the same God who changed the course of Isaac and Rebekah, the land of Canaan, is the same God we are worshiping today and he will help you in this journey. The same God who helped Jacob and Rahel, same God who bless you. David and Abigail at Camel, this same God will help you. The same God of was of Ruth in Bethlehem will be the same God who will help Foster and Deborah. This is a great mystery. And I speak concerning Christ and his church. God bless you.